where they, they'd be number one. Right now, if, if, if they could rap or sing along with their incredible dancing uh, in the 90s, it's no doubt in my mind that they would be probably the biggest drawing act in the world. The most amazing, amazing dancers I ever uh, seen in my life, ever. What do you do for a living? Oh, we sell lucky numbers. Yeah. Sell lucky numbers? Uh -huh. You can't sell lucky numbers over the radio. Uh -huh. No, what else do you do? Oh, we sing, we dance. All right, let me hear you sing. Lucky number, oh, dreaming of lucky numbers. Hoping that those lucky numbers yeah. will show for me. I'm a lucky show for you and me. The Nicholas Brothers. Oh, even Harold and Fayard are acknowledged to be one of the greatest dance teams ever. Their career spanned over 60 years, and yet this story has never been told. Can you sing? Can you dance? Well, I'll take a chair. A ski. A ski. From the moment they stepped out on the stage, the Nicholas Brothers have stopped shows all over the world. brothers and their sister Dorothy spent much of their early childhood in Philadelphia, where their parents led the orchestra at the Standard Theater, a vaudeville house catering to black audiences. This was the world that the Nicholas brothers grew up in. I was told when I was born, my mother used to take me to the theater in the, the bastinet, and she sit me right beside the piano as she was playing and the, my dad was playing and the rest of the orchestra. So I guess that's how I got rid of them. I had memories of my daddy and my mommy, my mommy, my mother. <laughs> when they were working in the, in the theater, you know, in Philadelphia, and they used to come home and my brother would be talking to him about how he enjoyed the show because he used to go to the theater there practically every day and watch the dances and things, you know. I guess maybe you've, he's told you this or you've heard it before. He taught me some steps and we used to do things together and we would, would show mother and dad. But obviously I was not anxious enough about it as Bayard was. So then he said, I'm going to start teaching Harold. I was showing him a step. And he was, he was having trouble getting this step. So I saw that he, he was having trouble. So I said, listen, we'll do it tomorrow. I see you having a little trouble now. And he said, no, no, I want to do it now. I said, now listen to me. We'll do it tomorrow, all right? He said, no, I want to learn it now. I said, OK. <laughs> so I started teaching him again. And we went on and on for an hour. He finally got it. All I did was follow him. I followed him and tried to do what he asked me to do and what, what he wanted to teach me to do. While Dorothy decided not to pursue a dancing career, Harold and Fayard began to develop a unique partnership. Fayard created routines for himself and his brother, inspired by the acts they had seen at the Standard. At the Standard Theater, I saw, saw the very brother. Uh, Leonard Reed and Willie Bryant, Buck and Bubble, 
the rhythm's okay in Harlem, and they swing it along. Yes, the rhythm's okay in Harlem. bob it, bib bib bob dib bob ba do I enjoyed them immensely. And uh, I remember I would uh, go to our apartment, the Gibson apartment, and I would s start trying to do steps that I saw the other dancers do in, in the living room. And I would dance from the living room into the kitchen and from the kitchen on the fire escape. So I was dancing all over the place. And uh, my father saw me as I was, was uh, practicing. And he was a great influence on me. He said, uh, son, he said, what you're doing, it's great. I like it. He said, but don't do what the other dancers do. Do your own thing. I said, OK, Dad. All right. And he said, listen, when you're performing, don't look at your feet. Look at that audience, because you're entertaining them, not yourself. I said, OK, Dad. Fine. And he said, that's something that you do I like very much. I said, what is that, Dad? He said, I like the way you use your hands. He said, do more of that. I said, OK, Dad. <laughs> My mother and daddy decided to manage us, because once they saw us doing a routine or something, they decided to manage us and quit their job as head of the orchestra in the Standard Theater in Philadelphia. And they were going to manage us. I guess they saw something there also. So, and uh, so we went from there. That's when it started. Things started growing bit by bit, from getting in vaudeville show, you know, in the theaters. The Lincoln Theater. It was on the corner of Biddle and Pennsylvania Avenue. And that's where I first uh, met the uh, Nicholas kids. Uh, Fayard, his sister, and Harold, and his mother and father played the orchestra. They were in the pit. She was the pianist and he the drummer. And that was my first encounter with the Nicholas brothers. Uh, they did a very... They, I, I, I don't remember how good or how bad. All I know is they stopped the show. And, and my part and I couldn't get on. In these theaters, they had different acts. And we had to wait. We had to wait. They, they were applauding so for the Nicholas kids. And then they brought out Harold, who could hardly walk out to do the encore, and that, that just made it worse. We hardly got on at all. When we did get on, they were still applauding for the Nicholas kids. Chicago was hearing about us. New York was hearing about us. Baltimore was hearing about us. And every city you can mention was hearing about the Nicholas kids or the Nicholas brothers. Nicholas brothers' debut in New York was at the uh, Lafayette Theater. It was at 131st Street and 7th Avenue. And uh, they were seen there by someone, and they went into the Cotton Club. Harlem's Uptown Cotton Club was the showcase for top black artists and fashionable white-only audiences. I first played the Cotton Club in uh, 1930. It was on the same side of the street as the Savoy Ballroom. And on a corner of 142nd Street, over top of it was the Cotton Club, over top of the theater. And just next to the theater, there was a small entrance near the entrance of the When you got there, it was a good fair, nice one. Herman Sox said he's got these kids. shot and <laughs> yeah that's all it is. So all you came in and they put put them in the show and they did a fabulous job the same year as their cotton club debut the brothers traveled to brooklyn to make their first film well my brother and i we, we always wanted to make movies and now we were going to make this shot for Warner brothers and with the bright lights and the camera there which was different from the stage much, and much, much different. Yes. Yeah. Well, because and naturally, you had an audience on when you work on the stage, uh -huh. but in front of the cameras, you have no audience. All you have is a camera. Yeah. yeah so the camera and was so the audience. I, yeah. Yeah. So you have to get that feeling get up that as feeling. It, that if is they were more. really out there. Mm -hmm.
Listen, I don't remember anything about Pop Hat Blackberry. But but you, I'm sure you do, because you used to tell me about it all. Yes, yes, I did, didn't I? Now, what do you oh, remember wait a about it? Let me refresh my memory. I try to, but every time I look at it and see it, I just can't be... It doesn't come back to me. I don't know why. Oh, you know? But, uh, wait a minute. What's that? There's something we do, the part we do with uh, Nina Mae McKinney. When oh, in the oh kitchen. yeah, she's in the kitchen baking I this vaguely, pie. I vaguely remember. And we come in, we were outside playing, little boys with, with our short trousers. <laughs> what is that, Miss Nana? Now, listen, Gates, you run along and chase yourself. This pie ain't ready yet. Well, what kind of pie is that, Miss Nana? That's a blackbird pie. Oh, a blackbird pie? There ain't no such thing as a blackbird pie. The Nicholas brothers soon became as closely associated with the Cotton Club as Cab Calloway, Ethel Waters, and Duke Ellington, and it would be their home for the next two years. Many Broadway stars and many Hollywood stars would always come to the Cotton Club. And uh, I'd say to uh, Herman Stocks, who was the manager of the Cotton Club, and then became our manager. So I said, I'd like to go out there and meet these stars. He said, OK. Going out there. So after the show, we would go out and go right to the table of whoever would be there. If it was George Raff, or Tulula Bankhead, or uh, Elmer Powell. We go down and say hello, and they say hello. Sit down. What would you have? I say like we'd like to have some orange juice. Tulula Bankhead came to see a show we were in, and she called us and wanted us to come out and see the sh see her because we, we were the only ones that could go out front and, and sit and talk with, in the audience, you know, with the people, because we were youngsters anyway. You know? And she said, oh, you warm before I love you. You know, well, well, thank you very much. And, and I, I said, oh, we love you too. Uh, uh, when is your birthday? And I told her, such and such, such. Well, how would you like a picture of me? I'd love a picture of you. Yes, oh, that's nice. Would you like a bicycle? And I, fool, I floated in and said, yeah, I would love a bicycle. So well, which would you prefer, the picture or the bicycle? I said, I'd like them both if I could have them. And <laughs> she laughed and said, oh, darling, you shall have both of them. And the very next day, <laughs> the postman rang, and there was a bicycle and a big photograph of Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> and, that, and I rode that bicycle all over Harlem. Everybody knew about that bicycle. They didn't allow black people to come into the cotton club in those days, uptown. The, didn't care how much money you had. If you came up, if you rode up there in, in, a, in a limousine, with diamonds and everything, the doorman would stop you. And the doorman was black. And he'd fight you if you tried to go into the cotton club. That, those were his orders. <laughs> so I, I didn't like that at all. Uh, there was nothing I could do about it. But I think my brother and I really st started something that was good. Even though we were just little kids. When I asked Herman Stocks if I could go out and meet all these great stars. And he said, oh. And then when I got a little older, I said, maybe the reason why we go out to go out there because we were just little kids. But I'm glad we did go out there because we sh sh could show them that black people had class. By the time the Cotton Club moved downtown to Times Square, the Nicholas Brothers were headliners. A Cotton Club show was a show that was made up of actors, singers, dancers, and they made three huge ensemble numbers in every show. And then the acts were in between. For a non club Cap Calloway would, would uh, say to my brother, come on out here. I heard you keep doing an impression of me. <laughs> What about it? It will put you in a day. To me, it don't mean a thing. But it's got a very peculiar swing. Dancey, 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 dancey. Dancey, 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 dancey. Dancey, 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 dancey. Dancey, 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 dancey. 
soon heard about the Nicholas Brothers, and in 1934, producer Sam Goldwyn summoned them to appear in the Eddie Cantor picture, Kid Millions. Other movie parts followed. Soon, they were traveling back and forth between the East and West Coasts. They made their Broadway debut in Sigfield Follies of 1936 with Fanny Bryce, Josephine Baker, and Bob Hope. When we were coming up, I mean, we were not like most of the other dancers when they when they were together, brothers, brother acts. No. All dancing acts together, which no. they used to argue and fight <laughs> all the time. But we we never no, no. did that. I mean, no, we didn't. Sure, we may have uh, disagreed about you know, this and that. that you know, yeah. uh -huh. I don't like that step. Or that ain't the right step or something. No, we never did but say it, that. It never got into fist fights. Or no, no. Never. Man, I would have beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> the same year they did the Zigfield Follies, they crossed the Atlantic for the first time. I went up to England on the boat, yep. and I got sick. Sick all the way, practically. <laughs> I remember that. But, but it was nice, playing shuffleboard and all that stuff. And we were, we were going over there for a review. Lou Leslie's Blackbirds. We're going to do that show over there. We were really a, almost a novelty, you know, so to speak, over there. Because they hadn't seen so many black people in, in, at one time. A bunch. And uh, it, was, it was nice. But everybody was, you know, they were just normal, treating everybody wonderfully. <laughs> Returning to America, they were featured in the hit Rodgers and Hart Broadway musical, Babes in Arms, choreographed by George Balanchine. At the same time, they performed at the nearby Cotton Club well into the night. Afternoons were spent being privately tutored at their apartment in Harlan's exclusive Sugar Hill. By now, established stars in mainstream show business, the brothers have become the pride of the black community. We went outside of the art for us. They were symbols. They meant something. They meant a great deal to, to our community, mm -hmm. to young blacks especially here. I don't know about the outside world, but they were, they were our heroes at that time. Still are, you know. Uh, people like uh, Bill Robinson and, and uh, the Nicholas Brothers and, and Joe Lewis. And, you know, they, they stick out in our minds as the people who were... Uh, inspired us and who we looked up to you know during, the, during those hard days in this country back in the depression days when they got their start uh many many performers of course yearned to be like the nicholas brothers i wanted to be like the nicholas brothers i wanted i wanted their success i wanted to look like them and act like them and uh make that kind of money in a large town like new york or chicago you would see a very important film advertised, and on the marquee, it would, it would announce the presence of the black performers. Even though they were only on the screen for two or three minutes, that meant the world to the black community, of course. People would say that uh, uh, we reminded them of the Nicholas Brothers, and that, uh, or we would be the next Nicholas Brothers. And uh, so I, was, I hadn't seen them yet, but I was aware of them.
I think in my little mind, I figured they were, must be great. Because I thought we were pretty good, and I figured they must be great. And um, so um, I thought that uh, that was going to be, we were going to be the next Nicholas Brothers, until I saw them. And then when I saw them, I realized that, that uh, nobody was going to be the next Nicholas Brothers, least of all my brother and I. When people come to me and tell me, isn't Michael Jackson a great dancer? I said, what? What are you talking about? Did you see him get up on his toes? What are you talking about? Pops and Louie did that. The Nicholas Brothers did that. Don't come to me and tell me something that's going to make me become truly angry that you don't do your history, especially as black dancers, and they'll know where that greatness comes from. That comes from those people who came before us. And the Michael Jackson, Dan Jackson, uh, all these dancers that are supposed to be dancers now don't come close to the Nicholas Brothers. In 1939, following a South American tour, they were signed by Fox to appear in the musical Down Argentine Way, teaming up for the first time with dance director Nick Castle. When we went to the rehearsal hall to meet Nick Castle, because he was the choreographer for the whole picture with everybody, and he, he greeted us and said, Oh, I'm so happy to meet you guys. He says, Now there's somebody who can do my ideas. I know you can do my ideas. He said, because all I'm doing here is with the little starlets, a one and the two and the three. And he said, I want, I got so much in me. I want you to come out. He said, I know you can do my ideas. audience in the theater have this sneak preview of, of down Argentine way were whistling and stomping their feet and clapping their hands that the the operator in the projection room had to rewind the film and show it over again and because of that 20th century Fox gave us a five-year contract they collaborated with Nick Castle on five more films for 20th Century Fox Tin Pan Alley the great American broadcast Sun Valley Serenade, dancing with Harold's future wife, Dorothy Dandridge. Orchestra Wives, and their pièce de résistance in the all-star, all-black feature, Stormy Weather. The studio saw them only as a specialty act, brought on for an energizing four or five minute routine. As black artists, they were never made an integral part of the plot or given lines to speak, but these brief appearances made them internationally famous. They were so much ahead of classical dance. They did need it, to, you know. What's extraordinary that uh, you recognize their style. They, again, they opened so, so many doors to so many people. Y in uh, later years, look at this. You recognize their style in, in breakdancing. You recognize their step in, uh, in steps uh, in rap. You recognize that, um, uh, you know, those things would never uh, uh, be... But there are the chain. 
They are the chain, and uh, that's why their their uh, their art is so important. Yo, found the bill. School is in. Can't touch this. But you know one thing? Right. I don't like the way that they videotape uh, some of the dancers. No. It, yeah, it seems as though they say whoever it is, if it's mm -hmm. if it's uh, what's his name, J C. Uh, Hammer. Hammer. Yeah. Not J C. But M C. Oh, is M? Oh, M. But he's cut out the he's MC. Cut, so he's, he's just, just hammer. hammer. If you could hide and watch me watch them, you would see that it, it, it takes me to, I'd be like a kid in a candy factory. Because when I see these moves executed, it's, it's thrilling. It's funny. It's funny that they could think of doing that particular move. And I, I, I'd be rolling all around the room. Every time I put, the, I put the pause button and laugh and giggle and then try to do it. <laughs> he's going into his thing. All of a sudden, they could do something else. Just like that. Yeah. And yeah, but I mean, for me, with, with Hammer, it, it's all right. Because it's exciting every time, whatever they do with it. Because uh -huh. he's moving all the time, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they, he's gone. He's working. You know? <laughs> and the feet work and everything. And <laughs> true. But some of the others some of the who, don't, others, uh, who yeah. don't dance as well as he does uh -huh. during that type of dance. Yeah. It gets, it, it, it I don't know, it's kind of chunky. It's like. You don't have to do quick cuts. You do quick cuts when dancers can't dance. I'm in video world, I know what they do. You don't need quick cuts for the Nicholas Brothers. You let them do, and they score. Makes it easy for a director when you have greatness. When you have greatness, let's cut to the middle of their body because their legs don't go up. And, uh, you know, I don't understand that. What's wrong with their arms? Let's get a shot of the underarm. I know, I've heard them talk in, in meetings. See, but the Nicholas Brothers, you know, you say, let them dance. And then we got a great video there. K-A-L-A-M-A-C-O Oh, a gal, a real pipper. She's a fine chick. I'm gonna make my bid for the circle face kid. I'm hurrying to go into Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Kalamazoo. like the term flash act and I remember uh, in a movie uh, I think uh, that's entertainment I think Mr. Davis uh, Sammy Davis said they were a flash act and that was the term for those kind of acts they did sort of acrobatics and stuff to me the Nicholas Brothers were never flash because they did close floor work too they could do everything and I don't like labels and I certainly didn't like it label about my favorite and my greatest what put them in a category flash was trivialized them they were never trivialized to me they, were, they did everything. So how could you put them in a label, you know? Imagine what the Nicholas Brothers could have done had they had the opportunity. Oh, it's frightening. But maybe that's why they weren't given the opportunity. You talk about your Donald O'Connells and Sammy Davis Jr. And, and many of the other entertainers. He has it. He does everything. Just like they do. Only he does it better. <laughs> People probably would say Fred Astaire was a natural dancer, you know, because he danced from head to toe. So like I, I always say that if, if my brother, you know, got together with Fred Astaire, it would be one, one Fred Astaire or one Fayard Nicholas, because I think that they were that close. Uh, those acrobatics, uh, uh, elements of acrobatics, were never intentionally to punch audience to the to their face. They were all the time emotionally ad attached to the dance. They knew exactly where the climax of the dance, where they have to, they can really dance easy uh, 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 and cool. And when they are uh, a smack audience across the face, when they tease uh, the audience, they were, uh, uh, and, and it's, and that's a sign of 
just a true, true choreographic mind. <laughs> And they just come down off of people's tables, you know, where people are uh, sitting at tables, and they hit on the stairs. I mean, it's great. That's great. The dance hasn't even started yet. So now, once they start the dance, they go into it. It's very jazzy. I remember, you know, it's like... It's very jazzy, and they're very relaxed. They're just dancing. Nice and easy, and they're just uh, setting the thing up that they're going to now dance. And then when they go over to where the bandstand is, they move over to the bandstand, and as soon as they jump up there, I mean, now they're painting another picture. You know, uh, I forget, I think the music at that point was bye, bye, and they're going, now we're building. And now they jump off of that, and that's the first time they jump into splits. And now we're, we're, we haven't even warmed up yet, but they jump off that thing into splits and come up. Now they go up the, uh, these stairs up on a landing there. And at that point, I thought that this is where the number is going to end because it was pretty, they've been there for a while. Then they jump on a piano top. And that point, at that point in the number, I think even now, just to show that where they jump on that piano top is, is uh, it's one of the most powerful it's real power tap dancing because they jump on the piano piano goes do 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 and they do something like and and it's and then after that then they jump off the piano now we're jumping from another higher level now we it's not just the band now it's off the piano they jump into splits so now they move along they move out of there and they move into this area where in the back of them is this big thing and you know at that point i thought maybe my heart might burst even now when i see them go in front of that thing i think to myself you know what are they going to do <laughs> Project themselves was pure class, 
That's all it was. We did vaudeville. We did nightclubs. Mm -hmm. We did movies. We did television. We, like I said before to other people who have interviewed us, that we have done everything in show business except opera. And all these things that I wanted to do has come true. Did you ever want to do opera? Oh, yes. I did. Really? I do a tap dancing opera. I didn't say, oh, soul on me, yo. A tap dancing opera. The full range of their talents was showcased in the Broadway musical St. Louis Woman. Harold Arlen gave Harold Nicholas a rare opportunity to perform a song which would become a standard. All the great songs that, that were written in, in those days. The, 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 when I was coming up, I learned them all. I was young, but I knew all the songs. All of Duke Ellington, Harold Arlen, and Johnny Mercer, and all those people. All those songs I knew, you know. But I never got a chance to really sing them like I, I, I wanted to on the stage in front of an audience or something, you know. So that, that was kind of, it was kind of hard for me because I thought about it a lot, you know. Why, why won't they let me sing? Because we were dancers, they said, you know. And that was it. I wanted to, though. When you start talking about Fred Astaire and, and Gene Kelly, you know, uh, why do people not say, you know, and Harold and Fayard Nicholas, you know, why don't they say that? You know, it's, uh, and, uh, it's something that it, it bubbles inside of me. Uh, we were doing the, uh, the Pirate a movie with Gene Kelly and Vincent Minnelli directing, and we had a routine to do with the Kelly where we all, in syn synchronization, you know, just the three of us doing the same thing. It was Gene Kelly's routine, you know, and uh, so we learned that, and, to, and we were rehearsing one day, <laughs> and naturally me, I don't put my heart and soul into rehearsals, you know, I'm doing it just like, you know, like a day school and all that, and Kelly looks at me, he says, Harold, what's the matter with you? I said, what do you mean? He said, you're not doing a routine. I said, well, I know it. He says, what do you mean you know it? Because he and my brother were doing the routine like the cameras were rolling, you know, and everything. And they were perspiring and carrying on. And he said, oh, man, we're working our heads off, and you just moping along. I said, but I know the routine, you know. <laughs> he said, you don't know it. You can't know it. We're doing like that. I said, Fayard, Gene Kelly, though, let's sit down and watch him do the routine. He says he knows it. But I bet he doesn't. Let him do it. So I says, oh, that, okay, I'll do it. Bam, music strikes up. And I go to the routine, bang, 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 bang. Everything, right to the very end, you know, like we were going on, on, on camera or something. And I finish it. Da -da, I said, <laughs> I said, how's that? And Gene Kelly was so mad, he didn't know what to do. <laughs> as gifted as they were at a time when it was exceptional, unusual, but was not to be tolerated by a lot of people who didn't feel that they should get too far. And I hate to put this on that basis, but unfortunately that's what has existed throughout the United States. If you get too good, they won't hire you. 
The fact that one black was making it at that time, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, does not change the fact that uh, the reason that the Nicholas brothers didn't make it is because there wasn't room for more than just one black. There were room, there was room for a Fred Astaire and a Gene Kelly and a Ginger Rogers and a host of others, um, but only one black. And his wasn't the movements of a Nicholas brothers. The Nicholas brothers would have been a threat to a Fred Astaire or a Gene Kelly. Because if you see, if I can walk on air, it's great if I'm the only one who can do it. But if two more guys come in here and they both can walk on the air and they walk a little higher in the air than I do, then what I do isn't so fantastic anymore. Work was, was getting pretty scarce, shall we say, you know. And um, we'd work here and there, and there but it wasn't, it wasn't weekly or constantly like it was before. So we said, and to, to fight that and the racism, I mean, it was heavy, you know. So I, you know, we said, ooh, the minute we got a chance to go to Europe, we jumped at it, you know. And went over there, read it, stayed, first time we stayed four years, you know, and just had a ball because of the difference, you know, in the way that you're treated. It was, it was fantastic, you know, for, especially for me. I said, hey, what is going on? This is great, you know, because um, nobody, nobody just uh, no, your money's not good enough, you know, because your color's not right. No, no, I did. We never got anything like that, you know. So naturally, you, you, you automatically love this. Why not? So I wanted to stay. <laughs> After several years touring Europe, Harold embarked on a solo career, remaining in Paris, whilst Fayard returned to Los Angeles. I got homesick. I wanted to come home, see my family. So I, I told my brother, I want to go home. He said, well, wait, you go going home and take care of the business. I'll come later. So I went back home, and he stayed in Europe, I think, Seven years. Seven years be before we uh, got together again. Welcome back. Uh, How was it in Gay Paris? Mm, very good. Very mm. good. Do you remember this step? Step? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wait it now. Don't. Not too much. Seven years is a long time now. Cool it. Take it easy. Mm, I think I can get into that. Come on, let's try it again. Are you ready? I'm ready. I do. Oh, wait a minute. Hold the phone. Huh? What was that? Same step with uh, just a little uh, French accent. <laughs> Following their reunion, they continued to work on TV and in nightclubs. Tragically, Bayard developed arthritis, and even walking gave him great pain. I was working with my brother when I had this arthritis. And uh, we, we were doing a tour with, with Sammy Davis Jr. And I was in so much pain, still trying to do those splits. So uh, my brother, he uh, saw the trouble that I, that I was having. And so he said, uh, don't do that. Don't do those splits. He said, just let me do it. He said, you just use your hands. And when I go down, you go down with my hands, and then you bring me up with your hands. I said, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Now that he's had, the, uh, you know, the hip replacement, he can move. He can get around. He can't dance like, he, you know, like you say, dancing. But he can do a few things, you know, and uh, which, which makes it wonderful. And I, I, whew, I used to, I used to feel very hurt myself watching him, you know, because he, that's his life. Dancing was his. So I had two hip replacements. And I guess you could call me the six million dollar man because now I'm walking better and dancing a little bit. Well, I'll show you what I mean.
Today, Harold continues an active solo career on stage and screen. Fayard, semi-retired, recently accepted a Tony Award for co-choreographing Broadway's Black and Blue and makes frequent personal appearances. But the Nicholas brothers still get together for special occasions. I think that uh, their, polit their, their political statement came out in their, in their art, in their craft, because we, as, as black people who did not have those opportunities or have uh, or have that needed to see that that existed and needed to see that that was a goal that one could aspire to brothers could be defined by any one thing which they can't I think the stormy weather number can just hold up you know it, it is like Shakespeare generation after generation will be amazed at what they do I would still like to have had my own my own show uh-huh or my own uh, movie or you know a movie oh, for me well, well featuring me Harold oh, oh. Nicholas, and <laughs> Hal <laughs> Nicholas? Yeah, you know. And his brother. like that. <laughs> they started out at the Cotton Club, but there was nothing other than they were a great act. People liked, they liked them. They loved them. They established it there, and they have maintained it over a period of 60 or 70 years. That's a remarkable thing. If they had all of that in this point in time, all of that energy and all of that uh, creativity, God knows what they would be doing, man. These cats would be levitating. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what they would be doing. There's nobody like that. There really isn't, you know? See, I was speaking <laughs> for both of us. No, yeah. you're not. He, uh, no, the thing is, you, you have to speak for yourself, because that's what oh, yeah, people want to know. Want to know. know and, yeah. see, and then I speak for myself. Okay. Well, then I... But that doesn't mean that we're not still brothers. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah. When they dance together... It's magical, and anybody that's got any emotion and any feeling and any truth to themselves will react truthfully to that and give them the standing ovation they deserve. A love to each other, to the audience, a great, great dignity in them. They're always... Uh, they were always Nicholas Brothers. They never stepped down. They stepped many stairs down, but never stepped down in who they are, who they were, and who they are now. Say, hmm? let's reminisce a little bit and show a film clip when we were younger. Much younger. Because if you're thinking of the same one I am, we were much younger. That's the one, All right. I, that's the one I'm thinking of. All right, let's get to it. Well, let's do it. <laughs> 